everyone, what a hoot it's been getting more pictures and videos from you of bluebirds on our Squirrel Buster bird feeders. Lizat's just sent me her videos. As you can see, it's a full on winter, but her bluebirds are eating just about anything. So I hope you're one of the lucky ones this year to get bluebirds on your bird feeders. Another trend that we're seeing this winter and it's been so mild, you know, I am the first one to complain about how little snow we've had this winter, but many of you who live in Northern states or here in Canada are seeing American robins. And since these birds are mostly insects and berry eating birds, everyone is really concerned of how they are surviving. I just went for a walk in our neighborhood woods and I noticed that all the berries are gone. So there's basically no natural food left. But at the same time, remember last year, Dave O'Neill, who lives in Ontario, sent us pictures of his American robins eating shelled peanuts. And then Steve Bigler, who lives in the United States, took pictures of his American robins helping themselves to hulled sunflowers. So it looks like American robins are adapting. So maybe there are some things that we can do for them to help them throughout the winter. There are a few things to take into consideration. First of all, robins are not your regular feeder birds. Don't expect them to just fly up and perch on one of your feeders and eat with all the other birds. They need an environment that they are used to. So something that's very close to the ground. So this is where a setup like this with our seed buster tray comes in handy, a uh, platform feeder as well. So you can just toss, you know, hulled sunflowers, hulled peanuts, dried mealworms, dried fruit, apple peels as well. Just toss them in the tray and hopefully this will entice them to uh, your backyard. If you don't have this setup, there are also feeders that the tray can be added to the feeder like our tube solution. So just put the tray in and you can toss the same type of food as well. I don't have any American robins around, so I'm not gonna waste my precious halt sunflowers. I'm just gonna toss a little bit because I know other birds and squirrels will take care of them as well. Well, good luck with American robins. Speaking of bluebirds, Sandra from New York State was quite surprised to see eastern bluebirds at her suet feeder. She only sees bluebirds in the spring, so this was a new development for her. Then she talked to her brother who lives in Michigan and he confirmed that he'd been seeing bluebirds at his feeders for a couple of winters now as well. So Sandra is just curious to find out what's going on. Hi Sandra, you were indeed very fortunate to be hosting such beautiful birds. Bluebirds are one of the most prized species among bird lovers, partly thanks to their gorgeous blue plumages, but also to the bird's frequent appearances in Walt Disney animated cartoon films. Your query to me regarding why they are appearing at your feeders this winter and whether there's a result of climate change is not easy to respond to, if only because the impact of climate change on birds in general is very complex to understand. I can tell you that eastern bluebird populations were almost down for the count prior to the 60s, thanks to myriad reasons, including the use of DDT insecticides, the loss of wooden fences for nesting holes, severe competition from introduced house sparrows and starlings, and growing numbers of free-ranging cats. But the birds have rebounded big time, thanks to the banning of harmful pesticides, and probably most significant, the creation of humongous trails of bluebird houses specially designed to keep harmful predators and competitors at bay. According to the North American Breeding Bird Survey, Eastern bluebird populations increased between 1966 and 2019, and today there are an estimated 23 million of them in North America. It's now considered a species of low conservation concern. Now for the tricky part. What impact is climate warming having on these birds? A recent study in Arkansas concluded that climate change may benefit adult bluebird survival due to the overall warmer weather, but raised concerns that climatic variability negatively affects their reproductive abilities. In short, hot temperatures are not good for raising baby birds, especially those using nesting holes. There's another concern though, one that was discovered in mountain bluebirds in Alberta. Due to warming trends and decreasing snow cover, that species is now arriving 19 days earlier than historically recorded. That's not a good thing though, mainly because the birds can get trapped in a fall spring where sudden April snowstorms can prevent access to insect populations and even kill the birds outright. 
We can help these birds though. While bluebirds are mostly insectivorous, they will eat berries and fruits and especially adore mealworms, live or dried. Most nature stores and the internet offer mixes of foods aimed at bluebirds. However, planting crabapple in certain berry producing trees and shrubs in your yard is the ultimate solution though. How would you like to be lying in your bed at night and have a mouse chewing on your head or neck? Sounds nonsensical, doesn't it? Something from a Stephen King novel. But that's exactly what Laison albatrosses, also known as moly, are facing nightly in their nests on the little islands comprising the Midway Atoll at the far end of northwestern Hawaii. Kuala Helene is home to the largest nesting albatross colony in the world. Recent studies have revealed that house mice have started to attack and kill the albatrosses, actually eating them alive as they sit on their nests. Black rats and house mice were inadvertently introduced to Kuala Helene during World War II. After discovering that the rats were wiping out the burrowing seabird species, the rats were eradicated. But nobody knew how murderous the tiny mice could be. When researchers discovered widespread wounds in the heads and necks of nesting albatrosses, followed by hundreds of dead birds, they used remote cameras to reveal the cause. But why were the mice attacking the birds? Well, it's quite the detective story. First, albatrosses are very curious creatures, allowing humans and other critters to approach them very, very closely. Second, climate change resulted in vegetation die-offs and a lack of the usual seeds and insects for the mice. Third, the mice had already developed an appetite for cockroaches and maggots found on seabird carcasses, so they were familiar with crawling onto the birds. It was just a small step to crawl onto live, unsuspecting albatrosses, which were everywhere, and develop a taste for meat and blood. An obvious solution, of course, was to lay out rodenticide poisons, and this was done until COVID halted the program. But alarmingly, the researchers are now wondering if the mice are developing a genetic resistance to the rodenticides. Stay tuned. Well, after eight years, Brombird News in its current format is taking a break. We're exploring new and exciting things to create content, but I'm still around. If you have any pictures or videos you want to share, please send them over. If you have any questions about birds of our products, don't be shy to reach out. My email is tatiana at brom.com. We're still on social media. We're on all the platforms, so please make sure to follow us. And if you haven't subscribed to our mailing list, please find the link in the description. And I'll see you soon. Take care, everyone.